Hello. 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 Hi. We're here. We're Hello. live. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to season three of the Stream Geeks podcast. This is episode one. I can. I am here. Sorry, guys. This is my first time. My first time. I am here with Mrs. Tess Protesto and Hi. Mr. Paul Richards. Hello. May the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you. How are I you guys? I forgot about that. Yeah. Isn't it Mike's baby's birthday or is that coming up soon? Oh, no. I forgot. Today, to we're going to talk about <laughs> joysticks. Oh, Paul wants us on track. Uh, okay. okay. We're not talking Guess about Guess we're going to have to get on track. And PTZ cameras. Okay. Yeah. If you're wondering what this podcast is about, we talk about technology in the live streaming space. We are talking about joysticks today, but a little bit of fun roped in there, like May the 4th chat and uh, what have you. There will definitely be some banter <laughs> because I am here and I will banter with these with these two. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, I keep it. I keep it cool. So, what do you got for us? How are we going to kick this off? Yeah. So, um, today's topic is the history of our joysticks. Interesting. We're going to look into that. Um, but first, from my understanding, this is your first podcast since April 2020. This is Lindsay. I don't th even think you worked for us back then. I didn't. I was not graduated yet. You were in college, college still. So wow. we have done a true podcast well we did podcast in the last episode but are we going to cut that for you um listeners out yeah, there yeah so this is going to be the first episode of season three we used to podcast like weekly i think it was like 2017 2018 2019 2020 and then we went all the way to april 2020 and then you, you all know what happened and we just let it go wow. well it's my, good to be back my extended spring break that just <laughs> never ended. Never ended. I'm still on spring break. <laughs> That's understandable. If you're watching on the live stream, make sure you say hi to us. And if you're wondering what the live stream is, if you're listening, you can catch uh, PTC Optics YouTube channel to watch the video version of this podcast. Yeah. So I have a poll that I want to go over with you first before we get into it. Um. So if you are a seasoned member here, you might be in our Facebook user group. That is PTZ Optics Pals on Facebook. And um, I post polls in there now from our sweet little product team. They have me, have me asking questions in there. And this past week's was, what is your favorite way to control your camera? Mm. And so we're gonna go over it. I think the best way to control your camera can we talk about our own personal yeah. preferences first? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, probably within, if you use a software switcher within your software switcher, if it has PTZ integration. So like uh, when we use vMix, that's mm -hmm. probably the, the easiest, I think, and my favorite way to control Yeah, cameras. you know, it's funny because I had to work directly with most of these companies. Uh, so I have a good recollection. Um, like vMix was really early days. It was like vMix 17 going back. 26, 2017, I think it was really for vMix 17 had PTZ control right. and we worked directly with them, but they're not the only ones. You know, we have a plugin for OBS. So open broadcaster software um, has it. Then I remember working with Wirecast and it involved like shipping them a camera, making sure they understood the documentation and how to implement PTZ camera control into their software. Livestream studio in New York before they were yeah. purchased by Vimeo. Um, Mimo Live is a really cool company from Germany that has uh, built in New Tech and the New Tech TriCasters uh, built in control. And there's a variety of others. I'm sorry if I'm forgetting um, others out there, but uh, that's just a few that offer it. And I, I agree with you that it is very convenient to control your PTZ camera with the software that you're using. Because it also unlocks some things that you can't do with the joystick. Now we're going to talk about the joysticks and joysticks are really awesome to have because you can kind of have a dedicated person with a dedicated device. And it's like, here's your job to operate the PTZ cameras. Um, but in the software, if you have PTZ control in the software, you can like click a button and automate things and make things happen automatically because you could have like a different Automatically. Scene. That was cool. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in software that you can't do with hardware, but you can't have a physical joystick like this. Mm -hmm. I'd say most uh, of our customers software. do prefer joystick controllers. Mm -hmm. 
They want something that is friendly with the camera that they can hold in their hands that they can have volunteers operate on. And that's where a joystick comes in for yeah. sure. I really like using the joystick because it feels like I'm playing a game. Yeah. Where did the idea of joystick controllers come from from PTC cameras? You know, I guess just the need to control your camera. Yeah. I mean, I think that um, so there's a couple things that predate it. One is literally like Pac-Man. Ah, so like yes. from like which came out a long time ago and they'd have these little joysticks. I think those were some of the early, early joysticks um, was Pac-Man and things like that. Mm -hmm. Then in the security camera industry, which predates a lot of the PTC cameras and live streaming had these so that they could like zoom in and like, like a prison or a jail and like see what's going on from a security perspective. And then our first PTZ joystick came out. It was actually the predecessor to this joystick that we're showing today, the Huddlecam HC Joy. It was called the HC Joy. <laughs> and it came out, I'm going to guess, in 2016. It's about eight years you ago. You have the OG yeah, picture. It's pretty cute. Yeah. You want to pull up a picture? Or so I have a picture? picture of it. I, we found one on eBay. <laughs> uh, if you would like our old joystick controller, there seems to be one left online. <laughs> One left um, out there. It actually brings back kind of bad memories just because of how much better our new joysticks are and all the features that are there. That The very first joystick, one of the things that we do here at PTZ Optics a lot is we'll release a product and then we'll listen to the customers over right. and over and over again. And now we're on the fourth generation. So this is so much better than our first joystick. It's almost hard to look at the, the old one. Yeah, Paul was cringing in the... Wasn't sure if we wanted to show it to everyone. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you got to start somewhere. I think it's endearing. I mean, yes. I have the desktop capture coming out via NDI to Mike, so he's he's welcome to. Yeah, let's show um, let's show a picture of the very first Huddle Cam HD joystick. If uh, oh, he's got it there. This is look it. at her. And I know it's legit because it's got the Huddle Cam <laughs> HD Joy mo sticker on the back. So this um, is the first one. This is this before is the IP joysticks. This is before, yes, and IP joysticks really changed the game. So we'll look at some of the IP joysticks too, but this is still traditional serial joystick control. What's the difference between serial control and IP control for those who are mm. new to the game? So that's a great question because uh, with serial, there's a couple big things. One is with IP joysticks, you can just plug one cable into it and it'll provide power for the joystick mm. and control and video for the Superjoy because the Superjoy has an HDMI output. Right. So you really get a lot of, of goodness out of that Ethernet. With a serial joystick, you are going to need to plug it into power because serial control does not provide power. It's just control. Uh, but the nice thing about serial joysticks is they're very plug and play. Mm -hmm. You literally plug the joystick into the camera and it controls it. It doesn't need an IP address. You don't need to know how to run a network or anything. So people still really like the simple plug and play. And the interesting thing with these serial joysticks is that you can daisy chain multiple cameras together, which a lot of times makes sense um, to daisy chain them. Like, so what a daisy chain is, the first cable from the joystick goes to the first camera, and then a cable from the first camera goes to the second camera, and then there's a cable that is called a daisy Literally chain. Literally creating a chain. Nice. Yeah. Kind of like a... A flower headband that you would make out of like clover flowers whenever you were a kid. Anybody do exactly. that? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. A little flower child over here. Okay. <laughs> why, um, why do you think they call it a daisy chain? Yeah. It, there you go. Okay. So before we get too off topic, um, I just want to go over some of y'all's favorite ways to control your camera. And it looks like the top three in the running are the PTZ Optics hardware, PT Joy G4, Super Joy, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, coming in second place is software, the CMP, vMix, OBS plugin, PTZ Optics control app, Zoom, etc. And then third party hardware, Stream Deck, Gaming Pad. Those are in order. Now, did those have results from the polls yet? Or? That's the yeah, order yeah. of the results, yeah. isn't it? 46%, 27%, and 22%. And then there's a couple other ones. So 46% would prefer a, hard, a hardware joystick. Yes. Huh, interesting. Uh, I would have thought that software would have been the most popular mm -hmm. um speaking of the cmp though is something that a lot of a younger if you're here's a tip like if you're trying to get the younger generation involved in like your church or your house of worship and you school. want them to volunteer at a school you can control the cameras with an xbox controller 
And I've noticed that children uh, under the age of almost any age gravitate mm-hmm. towards these joysticks um, mm-hmm. that are on the game pads. It just reminds them of video games. So, and I think we do live in a world where it's like, we're trying to transition children from away from playing so many video games. Sure. And this is an interesting opportunity to be like, hey, this is a real career, live streaming, video production, broadcast technology, but through something that you're familiar with as you grew up with video games. Yeah. That's, That's a nice crazy. little fun fact. Like how, how this is a real career, like being a live streamer. We're pretty lucky, huh? Mm-hmm. I yeah, think it's about a real that. Career. Yeah, we're pretty fortunate. There's 10 millions of people in the broadcast industry. Yeah. yeah. And so, that's not even like talking about people on Twitch and YouTube. Oh my gosh. I yeah. know. Just Seriously. Creators. If you think about the yeah. creator community, it's way bigger than millions. It's tens of millions. Mm-hmm. St. Mm-hmm. Paul's Lutheran Church says that they love the OBS app. They love the presets, but, um, oh, they're struggling with the last firmware update. The Mm. last firmware update fixed it. I think it's what they're saying. Ah, Um, after joystick firmware update, the presets. That's one of the things with OBS is a free software. It's open source. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they'll change something in like OBS 28, OBS 29, and then we have to go fix it. Yeah, what you've it's created. It's not as easy as we've been working with vMix for like eight years and it's never broken because it just, they, it's a closed source business and they do things differently. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so what else All you got right. for us, Lindsay? So we already went over when the first joystick came out, which you said was in 2016. Mm-hmm. And it was that cute little joystick. <laughs> um, how have our joysticks evolved over time? Ooh. Ooh. That's another good one. All right. So I have a uh, memory of this because I was there during all the releases. Um, you know, the, the layouts are getting better. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And th- from an intuitive perspective, you know, there was a time when you had to like click the camera that you wanted. You had to click and then like type it in and hit enter. But what a lot of people need is to be able to quickly switch between multiple cameras. So we, we, we created these hot keys on the side. Um, another thing that's been evolving and changing a lot that is nice is the access, and this is going to sound like it should have been there the whole time, but it wasn't, the access to the pan, tilt, and zoom speeds um, mm-hmm. is something that we've made very easy. And not only that, but the speed between presets, which we're going to show off on today's show. And I'll give you a couple examples. Like if you're, a lot of times our customers are tracking someone on a stage. Mm-hmm. And generally, if you've got a PTZ camera set up at the back of the auditorium, or whatever, you zoom it in and you're really just tracking them left to right. And so you can turn the tilt speed, which is up and down, almost to zero because you don't want to accidentally like go real high up or down because you don't need to. Mm-hmm. But you can then also get the tilt speed locked in so that it's a nice amount left and right. So that when you go all the way to the left, it's not too fast mm-hmm. and it's just right. So putting in those uh, those details. And then, of course, a, there's some other things like focus, for example. Um, we added some new things to do a autofocus real quick, um, which it used to be back in the day. Um, just like it would be like you had to turn autofocus off and then turn autofocus on. But now like they've done a lot of things like automatically. Like if you're adjusting the focus, you clearly don't need autofocus on, for example. So it just automatically turns off when you start adjusting the knob. Yeah. So things like that. Hmm. There's some aesthetic benefits or improvements as well to it. Just the black hardware shell, Mm -hmm. the rubberized buttons. Does the Super Joy light up? I forget. The Super Joy lights up. The That's Super Joy point. lights up. So, and the Super Joy, you can probably guess, is prob- is our most advanced joystick. So things like that, that that brings it closer to what you see in sort of those fun audio mixer boards. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's definitely some aesthetic improvements, too. Does, does the new G4 light up? This no. joystick has a backlit LCD screen. So the screen itself will uh, light up, but the buttons... I do not light up, but that's why the buttons are white 
mm -hmm. uh, with black lettering. So even in a dark situation, you should you be able to. And it, it's the layout is just so intuitive. Like you practically don't even need to know what they say after you've used it for a couple hours because it's very straightforward. It's like, here's your cameras, here's your presets. And then there's some additional things here, but it's, it's enough that like, if you're a camera operator, you can practically do it with your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, I think we covered most of the hard questions. How much time do we have? We've got uh, we some have time. We've got some time. 11 minutes left. What's going um, on in the chat? So let's, let's, let's uh, transition over to a couple other things then. Um, so today we're going to do the Huddle Cam HD mm -hmm. HC Joy G4. This is one of those products, by the way, I'll just mention that the, the name of it is the SKU, which yeah. I do want to move away from because I like it when a product has like a real name. Like the Super Joy. Yeah. Like the Super Joy. So something from a marketing perspective. Mrs. What Huddle we Cam over here. I like your, the color of your dress too. It's Huddle Cam, Huddle dressed, Cam Orange. <laughs> if, you're, if you're listening and not watching, you won't be able to tell us, but I'm dressed in a bright orange dress in celebration of Huddle Cam's release today. So you'll have to check out the YouTube channel to see what the dress is. <laughs> Where's your dress from? Um, Give us a haul. Hold on. Oh, this dress is from Marshalls. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's just a Marshalls dress. Marshalls. Love. Marshalls. We love a but I forget find. black something 50, is the company. Black velvet. No, is it black velvet? I can't remember. You'll have to check the tag for me later. Okay. Yes. I love the silky um prints right now. Yeah, it's like a silky dress. And you wore that in NAB. That's right. And it looked fire. If you're um watching on the YouTube channel and you're in the live chat, let us know how you are controlling your cameras or your production. Um let us know what you're using so you can be part of the conversation today. If you're just hopping on, we are in our pre-show podcast, which we just recently started. Um, so yeah, we're just hanging out before the live show begins, before we start talking about the joystick. Now, to answer your question a little more fully, Lindsay, regarding what the evolution of the cameras, one thing that has been added that we're going to show today is there is a new basic mode. And then there is a new matrix mode. I saw that. What is this matrix? Well, I mean, I guess we don't really want to get into it too much before the actual like show show. But yeah, well, for, I can explain what they yeah. are for those the, that the are only going to listen to podcasts. Yeah, let, let's let's dive into this matrix mode. I want to know about the <laughs> so matrix, matrix mode. mode is basically when you go into the matrix through the joystick itself. Okay. And then you realize that you're actually in a dream. Okay. <laughs> and essentially, you're operating cameras with AI. So, yeah, so you can, much. so when you intentionally lucid dream, you can control your dreams through the HC Joy G4. There you go. Yep. You it's it's, it's it as out. if someone else is controlling you with the joystick. You well, realize that. Well. It's like basically when you hit the matrix mode, like you realize that you've been dreaming your whole life. Whoa. RevDev Anthony from Michigan is using the software <laughs> app to control one PTZ camera, looking to add more cameras and interested in a controller. Well, then today's the perfect time to be joining the show because we're basically talking about all of our control options. Yeah, there's a lot of great control options. You know, this today we're looking at the serial joystick and then I do actually now need to explain exactly what the, the matrix mode is because Wait, before we're we going to scare people. <laughs> Wait, okay. Like, what I, have you invented? I have a fun question. Do you think we'd ever be able to control them with VR? Like, I've actually oh, seen, or like, have you seen it? I've actually seen some things where it's not necessarily VR, but you wear goggles. Okay, like yeah. VR goggles. But yeah, instead like, like what if like there's? Ooh, sorry. I just I just hit the hit the mic if you if you heard that. But um, yeah, like what if there's like cameras in the wild? And then you, it's live, but you have the VR goggles on. And, and you can control and it. And by the way that you're looking around, and then can we patent that? <laughs> Put a pin in that. Write that down. <laughs> Whoever's out there. I've seen some things like that, honestly. And it's not, it's not a bad idea. Um, one of the things I saw at CES, actually, was you put the, your phone 
into these yes. goggles. Oh. And then as you twist the goggles, it, it actually zooms the, the phone in. So it like makes it more if you're like trying to watch your son play soccer or something in a stadium <laughs> and you put your phone in to forget these binoculars, goggles, you can see them. You can zoom in to like real life. Very That's strange. crazy. So anywho. All right. So the matrix mode is kind of cool. It's ideal if you have three cameras, because what it does is there's nine buttons here. OK, so if, if a matrix is kind of like a three by three grid, if you will. And so the first three buttons are preset one, two, three on camera one, four, five, and six are the pre presets one, two, three on camera two, and then seven, eight, and nine are presets one, two, three on camera three. So it turns, so basically it turns the controller, gives it the ability to control three cameras basically at the same time. Three presets on three cameras at the same time. Yeah. So that's what matrix mode does. Okay. Now basic mode, what that does is it, it turns the joystick into basically so that people can't screw things up. <laughs> so if you hit, there's Sounds two basic us. modes. <laughs> this is designed for you, Lindsay. I just kidding. Hey, no. uh, but there's basic mode off, which is essentially what you would assume would be like everything works. But then when you hit basic mode, you've got two basic modes. You've got basic mode PTC disabled and basic mode PTZ enabled. So right now, the joystick does nothing because I'm in basic mode PTZ disabled. All the person can do is call presets oh. and that's it. Um, if you go to basic mode PTZ enabled, you can control... Oh, I'm messing up the cameras for Mike. I was <laughs> oh, Sorry, Mike. Oh, no. You're demonstrating. Did I mess up the camera pretty bad? Don't fix it. Zoom I'm it sorry, in. Mike. What did I do? You what was I doing? I'm sorry. I was needing basic mode. All right, here, I'm moving this, but I also messed up the um, colors, I think. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. Guest system is using an IP Joy G3. Radio AI is using a Stream Deck XL and a Nintendo joystick. Whoa. Michael is using an HC Joy 2, G2. Wow, throwback. Oh, throwback. Time to upgrade. <laughs> Time to upgrade. We have the G4 just coming out, Please Michael. Please send so. us a picture of your HC Joy. This Thank you for perfect. fixing that, Michael. Sorry, I didn't. I had it on camera too, and I was doing all kinds of. This is why Michael doesn't like me to do this, but I still do it anyway. Sorry, Mike. Well, we're demoing today, so. We need to have a safety camera. I would, by the way, though, I would love for anybody who has an, an HC Joy of any generation to email to Lindsay. Yeah, then I can do like a throwback Thursday. Or yes. something. Yeah, that'd be fun. I mean, just looking at the HC Joy, it wasn't the even original, G1. It was just HC Joy. If you have yeah. an HC Joy, let us know. Yeah. we need to, we need to see we, it. Like I'm literally Is going it still to. Working? We don't have. One. I'm going to create a museum. Eventually, we should have should. a museum in here. That'd be kind of fun. That'd be a really cool like wall art, yeah. just like every ver yeah. generation of the joystick. And we may need to purchase this G one one on <laughs> on eBay just for the museum. I feel like we should purchase it. Um, Anthony says that's called head tracking, been used in the RC community for many years. Yeah, it's it's out there. What you what you were saying? I I thought uh, I invented something. Timothy has the PT Joy G3 IP super controller. Oh, super. yes, the G3. And, and now we're on the G4, yeah. but the G3 was a really good run. And that one added a lot of the, the, the benefits of IP control. With what led us to the Super Joy. Many of the um, improvements that happened over Who the Who out there is using a Super Joy? Yeah, if you've got the Super Joy, now's your chance to say you're super, super Sean, cool. <laughs> Sean said he's going to bid up. That, uh, <laughs> He's that gonna joystick. Up the HD joy. <laughs> I'm going to share the, in the link. chat. Somebody's going to buy it. Well, we don't want to get the. Don't bid it up too high. I'm I'm planning on buying it. Because we're going to buy it. I'm going to share. I don't know if I'm allowed to share this link in the chat. I think that would be like spamming almost. It Somebody's should let you if you're logged someone's in. Someone's going to. Whoever owns this joystick okay. is just going to be like, why is it? What's going why, on? Why is it going like, worth more than <laughs> like, like you paid why, for it? Yeah. By the way, we do have a Zoom call opening for Q&A at the end of today's show. Um, so we'll share a link in the chat if you wanted to join today's Zoom meeting. Oh, we do have a Zoom today. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Nice. Well, we have three minutes left. Do we want to wrap up before the live show? 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think okay. we should wrap it up. Okay. Um. <laughs> Paul looks so concerned. He's like, yeah, of course we should wrap it up. Okay. So thank you for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching and interacting with us. And stay tuned for the live show. I'm Lindsay, your host with Tess and Paul. And we'll see you next time on the Stream Geeks podcast. Thanks, everybody. Woo! <laughs> Available Yay. now on Apple Podcasts. Is it on Spotify? It was. Hmm. It, it, the way that podcasts work. It will be. It, w- it could be. You got to be careful what you promise, Tess, because you say it will be. What's it on now? Podbean? Bean Pod? So Podbean is a podcast distribution service that connects to all the others for you. So it's like a, it hosts the podcasts. So we, and we are using it. So it should work. Um, Oh, Anthony has the super joy and would love to see the spring loaded focus dial replaced with a non spring dial. Whoa. Oh. See, this is the type of thing I'm gonna write that down. This is what this is exactly how we have improved our joysticks is just yep. simply listening, and we have heard that. In fact, somebody told the engineers. By the way, this is the danger of this, though. You can listen to people, and then they give you, they tell you that they want something absurd, and then if you believe everyone, then you're in trouble. That's why Lindsay's doing these polls because recently someone told the engineers. They didn't like the twist on the joystick to zoom, and, and they wonder that blew like my mind because I was like, "Well, how are you going to zoom then?" And we posted it on the poll, and it came out that what was it, Lindsay? Eighty percent of the people like the twist. I appreciate that. Can she do it? So, I mean, I get it. Some people want different things, and sometimes we can even build features into the joysticks to have those things put in. 97% said, yes, I enjoy the joystick's twist to zoom feature. 3% said, no, I wish the joystick could That's only one pan tilt <laughs> while another area handled zoom. And I think that was just one person. Yeah, so one person does not want the joystick to twist. And I get it. If we can add that feature, we, we'll put it in there, but it'll be like a checkbox in the bottom of the settings right. area. Right. All right, guys, 15 seconds. I guess we'll get started soon. So am I the host now? So are we... You can do the intro to the real show. Are we going to, like, fade? I guess we should have discussed this before. (laughs) Kick it off, Paul. Here we go. Hey, welcome to the PTZ Optics and Huddle Cam HD live stream. Today, we are showing our brand new HC Joy G4. This is our serial joystick controller. We are going to open the box and set this up. I'm joined with Tess and Lindsay. Hey, Paul. Hey, folks watching. What's up? We just finished our podcast. We did. Those have been so fun, and I'm Mm -hmm. so glad that we started that again. So inside this box is the world's most advanced serial joystick controller. And for those of you who might be thinking that IP is the only way to go, I'll say. Think again. Think again. May the fourth be with you. No, I'm joking. Um, There's some benefit. I think that's the best way to start this is to talk about some of the benefits of serial joysticks versus IP joysticks because you may know PTZ Optics has the PT Joy G4 like kind of like our workhorse fourth generation of our IP joysticks and then we have our PTZ Optics Super Joy which is our um very funly named a super joyous 
joystick, top of the line one with HDMI and all this great stuff. You are on it with all the dad jokes today. <laughs> all the what was the magical one in the podcast and all the magic. Automagic. Automagic. Super. I don't even. I've even super. got a um, may the fourth be with you, um, GIF that I can send to to Mike, but I think uh, Disney oh, might get mad at us for that. Han Solo. Are you saying Han Solo? That's us. Well, I have to be Leia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take that off. That but make, yeah, does that make me um, um, like you're the one with the braids, like ch- uh, Yoda? I'll be Chewbacca. Yeah, I was going to say I'd be Chewbacca because of my hair. But I'm kind of giving elf today. and Yeah, you are looking more like 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 the the Legolas, the female Legolas. You are. Um, I I actually, I have a confession to make. Aragorn? Really? I've never watched. No, that's the king. Lord of the Rings. All right. I've never watched. So the Huddle Cam HD joystick is, uh, by the way, some of you watching today probably have one of the Huddle Cam HD joysticks. Uh, a lot of people. There was an original HC Joy. Then there was HC Joy G2, which was the second generation. Then there was G3. And now we are on G4. And Mike is showing right now the PTZ Optics IP joysticks that we have on the table because we've got it all. We've got the IP joysticks. We've got the serial joysticks. And this is what we're going to look at today. Really cool joystick. One of the things I like about this joystick is it's super affordable because it's serial. It's only $299. And it's very popular, probably because of its price point. And so we're going to go over all the features of this one by one, starting off with what is the HuddleCam HC Joy G4? What is it? What Tell is us, this What's joystick? This? What's this? this joystick is a BTZ camera controller that gives you pan, tilt, zoom control along with a variety of features. And I'm just going to do a high level um, look at this joystick. On the right hand side, you have your PTZ pan tilt zoom joystick controller, which can go in 360 degrees. And one of the things I noticed and the engineers confirmed with me, it's more sensitive than previous generations. Mm. So it's really got a fine touch now, like just a little touch for super small movements is there. So precision control, but it also has a, a decent amount of upgrades. One of the things people really like is the focus lock, focus lock on and off. We've got our, our focus up at the top here. So you got your whole focus area. You got your pan, tilt, and zoom speeds. And if you're looking at this from uh, how is it different from the old joystick, it's these four knobs at the top that really simplify the whole workflow. So you've got your cameras over here so you can switch between you know, up to seven cameras on hotkeys, but then you can go to further by hitting cam ID and like camera 255 and hitting enter. Um, another thing that was requested by our customers just to give again a high level overload is we have these modes here. So we've got basic mode. Um, this is for Lindsay, the basic mode. Again, just, are you saying I'm a basic, <laughs> basic white girl? I'm saying you're the basic PTZ. Yeah, you're the basic PTZ girl, I guess. I'm kidding. But basic right. mode, and you can PTZ you're enabled right. and PTZ. You're, right. you're basic PTZ disabled. <laughs> what? That's what? Basically, and I'll explain Means this. Means you cannot move. So there's okay. basic PTZ disabled, <laughs> and then there's basic PTZ enabled. Um, and so basically, you can have basic mode where you can literally, all you can do is just operate the buttons on this side of the screen so meaning you can switch cameras and you control presets but you can't mess with any of the detailed settings and then there's basic mode ptz enabled where again you've got all your presets all your camera switching and your modes and stuff and you can control the joystick and then finally there is matrix mode and this is one of the cool modes for those places that have two or three cameras what matrix mode does is it makes camera one presets one, two, three enabled, camera two presets four, five, and six enabled, and camera three presets one, two, three on button seven, eight, nine. I know this is difficult to explain, but essentially these nine buttons here operate three different cameras and camera one is one, two, three, camera two is four, five, six, camera three is seven, eight, nine. So you've got a three by three matrix 
that's divided up into sections of three. I know that sounds complicated, but I think most people understand what I'm saying. So that way you don't need to switch cameras. You've just got three simple presets for three cameras without having to go anywhere and do anything. Now, I will go ahead and unlock it so that all things are open. And um, we're going to skip opening the box because I figured it'd be easier to just have it um, open mm -hmm. and set up already. So what I would like to do is actually show a diagram of how this joystick connects with a variety of different cameras. And quite honestly, almost any PTZ camera it can control uh, that supports serial control. So I think we have a diagram um, that we're going to pull up. And this diagram is going to show some of the... If we don't have it, um, then I'm going to assume that's why it's not showing up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you. And I actually had, there's a diagram actually in the manual maybe that I could show, but we should have a cool 3D diagram. I don't know. Maybe we don't. I'm guessing we don't because we're not panning to it. Um, so instead, we will show the manual that has a diagram in it. Is it Brian's diagram? Yeah, I thought, I thought we had a cool diagram. Brian, where's the diagram? Doesn't sound like he has a diagram. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to show this uh, really nice manual. Actually, just so you know, so this is the manual that comes with the, the camera or the joystick. And I'm just going to kind of explain how the connections work because um, we don't have that image. Um, okay. So there are two different ways to connect to PTZ cameras to this joystick. One of them is what is called a DB9 connection. And the DB9 connection connects from the joystick to the first PTZ camera. And what you can do is you can daisy chain these cameras together. Ah, we got the, we got the diagram. Oh my goodness, thank goodness. Oh, yay. <laughs> All night I had a tizzy. It's okay. I didn't, I could do it without the diagram, but this is my, this is, look at this diagram. <laughs> Yes, this is a great diagram. Kudos to Brian, our CGI artist. Okay, now I'm happy. A wizard. A so what's going on in this diagram? Okay, uh, this diagram took a long time to put together, so I'm glad we have it because it shows every variety of how this joystick could be connected. So <laughs> we've got it. <laughs> Woo! I think our caffeine intake before the show today was a bit oh, too high. Okay, we oh, we got the joystick. I don't know if they're Diagram. pumping loopy gas into the studio today, <laughs> but we are on one. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Every okay. all smiles over here. Okay. All right. Let's back to the diagram. I'm really going to enjoy this now. Like this is let's this is do good. this. Yeah. Let's go over this diagram. Okay. All right. So you've got the brand new AutoCam HC joystick, the Gen 4 in the middle here. Congratulations. And I'm going to draw our attention to the top right where Brian has very nicely built a legend so that uh -huh. we can, because this is as easy as cereal Great, is. Guys. I really want to, I want to cover this in a way that is like very detailed. So we have four different cables here. And if you really want to be a pro at AV, you're going to follow along. And, and, and if you understand this, I do. This is like the foundational like, information from like serial control days. Okay. RS-485 is a wonderful cable and that cable is a serial cable. And you might wonder why, why would we use RS-485? Well, RS-485 can be run up to 1,200 meters. So that's, ah, 300, that's the benefit. 3,937 3, feet. Jeez. So if you've really got to run a long cable, you can use 24 gauge twisted pair cabling, almost 4,000 feet. So we're showing RS-485 there to a PTZ Optics Move 4K 30X camera that we're assuming is very, very, very far away from wherever you might be going. Now you can also use RS-422, which is full duplex. And that cable can also be run quite far. Um, and you can daisy chain these cables, these cameras together. So with either one of those cabling options? Yes. Um, and it is in the manual. It will show how you can do that. Um, and Andy from our support team is an expert at this because he's always helping our customers 
to do this because it, it must come up quite frequently because he has it all detailed here and they do it all the time. Now, the DB9 cable, okay, so now, so now we're down to the RS, RS232 section. Mm -hmm. The DB9 cable is actually a nine pin cable that connects to the joystick and connects to the first camera. It's not eight pins? It's actually nine pins. That's why it's called DB9. And on one side of the cable, it is DB9, nine pins. On the other side, it's eight pins. There you go. And it's one of those strange things. I don't know why they have that pin there and then they get rid of the other pin. But uh, Mike, if you want to show the top down shot here, maybe I could at this point. Um, okay, perfect. All right. Here's so this is, this is the back of the camera. I'm going to unplug this to show this. <gasps> so this is a DB9 cable. This comes with every single PTZ Optics camera. It also comes with the joystick. And it plugs into the DB9 connector. And I'm telling you, there's nine pins here. And there's also right here, this is called a Phoenix connector. And this Phoenix connector has two cables run to it. And this would be your RS-422. Oh, 422. Oh, 422. Then where's the 485 situation? Now, the 485 would is your other option and it does use these uh connect these phoenix connectors now while we're on this shot like in the context of the diagram this oh i wanted to show one more thing over here sorry on the, okay so this is called a eight pin mini din connector and this connector i'm gonna camera here this eight pin mini din connection goes into the in 8-pin mini DIN on the back of the camp PTZ camera, and then it can be daisy-chained and come out of the out port of the 8-pin mini DIN. And, and then into another cable. Into another cable. And that cable is not a DB9. It is an 8-pin mini DIN. So you, if you want to do that, you would use a cascade cable, which is an 8-pin mini DIN to 8-pin mini DIN connection that will come out <laughs> to one wow. camera and into the next. <laughs> That is my explanation of how these cables work. Now, with all that being said, you might think, hmm, maybe I should just use a cable. But serial cables are very plug and play. You do not need a network to use them. You have some really interesting options. For example, uh, with this camera here, with this joystick, you'll see I've got and db9 so we've got the, the rs232 coming out here but i also have a cable coming out of this one so we technically have what i would consider two home runs so one home run cable to the first camera and then another home run to the other camera it is not a date so if you daisy chain two cameras it's considered a daisy chain but if you send just one cable out and then one cable out it's called, not a, connected, so it's called a home run then okay. yeah. So, Home I'm so glad we have that diagram. Eight pin mini dins. Eight pin mini dins. Does that all make sense to you, uh, Lindsay? Can you, Lindsay, can you please eight, uh, repeat all of that eight, to me? Eight pin mini dins. Eight pin mini dins. <laughs> attached it to the nine. I don't even know. It sounded like a rap. And I was, I was <laughs> cracking up. Eight pin, eight okay. pin mini din to the daisy chain and the home run. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over some of the features of the joystick. And I'm going to take you guys through kind of one, one thing at a time here. We're doing a live demo? Yeah, we're going to go jump into Jumping our live into demo. demo. All right. So here's the live demo. And what I have here is obviously a really good shot of this joystick. And then in front of me, I have the PTZ camera that I'm controlling. Um, oh, earlier... Oh, sweet. There's a live shot from the camera. I was wondering what that shot was. I was like, what is the deal with the shot? Okay. So this is me controlling the camera. And um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom it into this camera. And in the back of this camera, just to complete, to complete my demo here. He's on the move. Okay. That's no problem. What's he doing? Logan wants to know, how is the sensitivity of pan, tilt, zoom, even on the lowest setting of the Super Joy? Uh, we were just reviewing the HC Joy today, but um, what were you just pointing to, Paul? So, um, what I wanted to show here, just to complete my cabling demo here, is that on the back of this camera, and I'm not sure how well you can see it, 
Um, so what I'm going to do is maybe I'll use the joystick to zoom in a little more even. Um, but uh, it's a little, there's no light on this thing. Yeah, no only light. the stage is lit. So you're getting um, a view that's pretty dark. All right, let's just use a flash. Uh, this is some this real. Baby up. This is what we do in the wow. studio. You do what you can. <laughs> okay, here we go. Light it up. Now this, yeah, this is good. This is very good. All right. Oh, that's that's perfect. Now, do you see that connector on the back of that camera? That is the green the, one. That is the RS four twenty two or four eighty five. That is the RS four eighty five Phoenix connector that is connected to the back. So just so you could understand how this joystick is connected, it is, thank you, Lindsay, that's perfect. Um, so this camera over here, when I go to cam two, I can control that camera. See that? And so that's part of my demo. That's what I'm gonna show today. So, Coolio, perfect. all right. So the reason why I wanted to show that was because when I hit camera one, I'm controlling this camera. Down. And this camera, as we showed, is connected with a RS-232 connection. When I go to cam two, I'm controlling this camera over here. Now, how did I do that? I'd like to show. So I'm going to try to just go through all the features of this, this joystick now, one by one. Um, now, one thing you can do, of course, is the focus lock. So you can focus lock. You see the unlock and the lock coming on and off. Focus lock is nice because once you get the camera exactly where you want it, you can lock the focus in. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, or you could unlock it. Now, on this twist dial here, and this is really nice how they designed this. If you're a camera operator, you'll appreciate this. You've got your near and far focus. So as you, I'm going to do this with camera one, not camera two. As you go to the left, you are changing the focus one click at a time. As you go to the right, you're changing the focus to be more near versus more far. When you click that button, it's it's what we would call in at PTZ Optics snap focus. So in the new PTZ Optics uh, cameras, they have the new snap focus feature. So you click that button, boom, it's going to focus it. It automatically focuses. And then when you twist it, you're basically saying, "Hey, I want to do manual focus control, near or far." And it automatically goes out of autofocus into manual focus mode. So you like see how I'm clicking it and it's going out of focus. And then I'm clicking it. And watch this. Boom. Snapped into focus. Slay. See that? <laughs> so you have the ability to one click at a time kind of go into the exact focus of the camera that you'd like. And I really like that. Boom. Snap focus action. Now here on this um, thing here. So let's see if I pan left to right. There's a specific speed at which the camera's panning. So I can set the pan speed, okay, to a really to a really slow speed. Let's see what the slowest pan speed is. Pan speed of one. Oh, you can even go even slower. Look at that. That's really slow. So it's really can go super slow. Wow. Okay. And then you can, of course, I'm gonna turn that back up a little bit so I have a little bit more control. And then you can do the pan, the tilt, the zoom speed, the focus speed. And then importantly, the preset speed. So if we set a couple presets here, like let's say we'll zoom into this a little more. We'll call this preset one. And by the way, to, to, to create a preset, you just click and hold. And talking about the history of joysticks, you used to not be able to click and hold, believe it or not. It was like something else. Click and hold for two. Now I have preset. If I click preset one, boom, it's going to zoom in. If I click preset two, it's going to zoom to wherever you set preset to. Now, if I change the preset speed over here to a slow speed, oh, to like a very, very slow speed, and I click, see, it's going to zoom in slow, uh, slower. See that? Hmm. So you have options on, on that as well. And that's not as slow as I thought. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it. Forget it. <laughs> set it and forget it. <laughs> All right, so preset one, and then we'll do preset two there. That's a pretty cool shot. That is a cool shot. Boom. Okay. Now, what else? 
what else? Okay, so next is the modes. So in the modes, we have basic PTZ enabled, basic PTZ disabled, and then we have matrix mode. So on the basic PTZ disabled, the PTZ does nothing. And it even reminds you, hey, PTZ is disabled, so stop doing that. Um, but it does also have the ability to do that. You can still do the presets. Okay. So it basically just gives you access to this side of the joystick, not the advanced things over here, which is a good transition into talking about some of the advanced things. Okay. When you have basic enabled, obviously now you can use the joystick. When you have matrix mode, you enter a mode where you can have camera one, two, and three controlled in just a three by three matrix where camera one is buttons one, two, three, camera two is buttons four, five, six, camera three is buttons seven, eight, nine. So if you've just got a three camera setup, it's really ideal. That is ideal. Now on the more advanced side over here, this is all of your options for controlling the camera. And one of the, my favorites is the OSD open and close, uh, which is very oh, yeah. new. That, that is all new. So you click settings. that button and boom, you have opened up the menu there. So we can see the menu and I can operate the menu with the joystick controller. So I can go in here and something that I actually wanted to show was the setup area. Now you click the enter button to get in. You might push the joystick to the right. Why is that? I thought that it wasn't working. Oh. Um, it leaves a show in the menu. And then you can go Where's back. The menu? Now when we go to the communication setup and we hit OSD enter, something to look at here is, okay, so we have protocol Visca, but the joystick also supports Pelco D and Pelco. Why might we change <gasps> that to Pelco? I just changed it to Pelco D and you know what happened? I can't control it anymore because I changed it. So explain to us what you just did. What happens when you go to the other camera? Um, basically because, oh, well, actually, there's a way to fix this. Ah, geez, this is interesting. Challenging, actually. Challenging. So, he loves the challenge. So the joystick, this is good, to, I guess, good to review. We might as well do it. Um, the joystick has been set up to communicate with Visca, which is uh, what we normally recommend customers use. But because I just switched it to Belco, I'm going to have to just show a feature of the camera that's, that you generally won't show. But it's this like setup button here. So I'm going to hit the setup button. Damn it. And then, oh, it's because it's stuck in the menu option. That's why. Okay. All right. What happens if you unplug it? Can we get it back that way? <laughs> Um, no, actually, the jo uh, so I can still operate camera two, so we're okay. Okay. Um, so for my demo, I'll just switch to camera two. Um, but yeah, that's something that I wanted to show, and I did not foresee that happening. When you switch the um, communication uh, protocol, then you basically uh, need to switch the joystick back. So now I've got this camera right here that I'm controlling with the joystick. So, given Mike all kinds of technical issues. Uh, to deal with. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, with that being said, uh, I think it is a good idea to probably go on to the next section. Of the Which is IP versus serial. IP versus serial. So, Which if you wouldn't you mind choose? handing me a IP joystick, dealer's choice, unless you want to ask the uh, audience. We've got some questions about the Super Joy, so let's... Okay. So I've got the Super Joy here, and the Super Joy is actually one of the um, rare joysticks that actually can do IP and serial at the same time. So this is a good learning experience for uh, you, Lindsay. I'm looking at you because I know that this is a learning experience for you. L Tess knows all this stuff. Already. Listen, just because it's true doesn't mean it's not her. Got to be mean. <laughs> I'm not being mean about this. I'm just <laughs> saying this is a good learning experience because no, it is. You know, a lot of joysticks. Um, so this is. I, I'm just like interested, actually, thinking about this. So we've got this joystick we've been playing with for about a half hour. Here is a serial joystick. Mm -hmm. 
the joystick on the table, the PT Joy G4, is an IP joystick that could also be a serial joystick. So it's either or. So the PT Joy G4 is very versatile. Mike's got it there. And if you flip it around, Tess, um, you'll see on the back of this joystick, it also has, uh, it not only does it have an IP connection, but it has a serial connection. So this joystick, the PT Joy G4, can actually do an IP control of cameras over the network, or it can control cameras over serial. The Super Joy, being the super duper high end one that it is, <laughs> can do a mix of IP cameras and serial cameras. So it's cool, kind of how we've got the whole family, you know, in the house here. We've got our little little brother, if you will. It's only $299 in the U.S., right? The Serial HC only. The HC Joy G4. Then we've got the PT Joy G4, which is the middle child, the workhorse, $649. It can do serial or IP. Then we have... Big what, Daddy. Big Daddy, basically. <laughs> and this one is... Not only does it have serial, not only does it have IP. NDI. It has NDI. Mm. So this one can do it all. And it has an HDMI output. And now I'll ask Mike to bring up the diagram. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know you don't have the SuperJoy <laughs> diagram handy. I'm joking. That's uh, cruel. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's the comparison there. That is the comparison. Now, at a high level, um, IP technology is plug and play in most scenarios where you can plug an Ethernet cable into the joystick and it powers the joystick, it controls the joystick. And in the case of the SuperJoy, actually provides video that you can output via HDMI. So Ethernet is very powerful. But in the serial world, it's very plug and play in the sense that you don't need an IP address, you don't need to set up a network, you plug it into the camera and it controls it. So, um, Anthony is actually mad at me for, for, for calling you out on your learning experience today. Aw, thanks, Anthony. It's okay. Anthony is defending you, Lindsay. I'm we sorry. Thanks, Anthony. <laughs> I was trying to say that in the most <laughs> nice way possible. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's okay. Because it is a learning experience, it is. right? Yeah. And I was also saying it in a way where I was like, Tess doesn't need to learn because she already knows. Yeah. <laughs> Tess has been here I'm a little still bit learning. longer than me. Still learning. I mean, some of this stuff is quite technical in nature. Yeah, I know how to zoom it and move it around and call, yeah. make some presets. And if you're presented with a joystick, <laughs> don't you twist it for zoom? Isn't that intuitive to you? Yeah. Like you would twist it and you would expect something to happen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, but because when because like joysticks without twist is like Pac-Man. Yeah. It's like there's no need for twist. Yes. It's just up, down, left, right, and it's like Pac-Man days. I guess maybe some people are nostalgic about Pac-Man. Maybe. I'm nostalgic about Pac-Man. Um, now, going all the way to the Xbox controller that we talked about, which you can use to control cameras, these joysticks don't twist. Mm -mm. If you twist it, you break it. So My what do you rabbit do? chewed mine. Your My brother chewed kid. on yours? Yeah, she like chewed off the, the, the trigger little knobs. It's the triggers, test. Tess yeah. is one step ahead of you, Lindsay. Oh. Well, my rabbit chewed <laughs> off my knobs in my PlayStation we, joystick. We so, sent Lindsay off on yeah, our journey. Yeah, I just, it just triggered something, I guess. It's a trigger. Triggered with the triggers. The trigger triggers buttons. are used to, pay, to to zoom in and out. That's how that works. Oh, yeah, I didn't See? know that. And the cool thing about these game pads is because this is, a, this is an Amazon Basics pad, uh, game pad, but mm -hmm. it's an Xbox controller design. It plugs in via USB to a computer. And with the PTZ Optics CMP, Camera Management Platform Software, not only does this plug and play and work for PTZ control of cameras, but also this joystick can be reprogrammed so that you can actually have the A button do different things. You can change it because of the way the preset. that Sarah designed the CMP to be super flexible. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah Cross. So can you use wireless controllers as well? Like the wireless Xbox? That is a very good controller? question. I think we've tested that before. Does it not work? I think it might, actually. Okay. But I don't like to say anything that I'm not 100% sure of. So what we're going to do is we're going to write that one down. Okay. I wouldn't know it down. why it 
wouldn't, and we're gonna but... we're gonna test it. So so is there such so there's wireless Xbox controllers? Yeah. Is what you're saying? Yeah. All right, wireless. It's a good idea. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it wouldn't wireless work, but controller. then again, maybe it all needs to be daisy chained together. Dare I say? Did I use it right? Probably not. I, I don't think right. you would daisy chain the Xbox <laughs> controller. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right anthony see this anthony is why help me. this is why paul said that <laughs> i'm just here to take copy and post it out and, and make people giggle you're learning I mean, no you're learning i mean literally that i and I, i'm not saying this in a mean way but that was the role that tess sort of played in the very beginning Absolutely. when she didn't know a lot of this stuff and then um now look at her it's helpful to have somebody who is more on that entry level mm-hmm. learning because they are the customers that are also at that level and they can ask the questions that we might not otherwise would have thought about. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely a need for our program. Yeah. I would just say like on the virtual reality and the, and the matrix thing, you're going a little too far, but otherwise <laughs> pretty good. I had a pretty good idea. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. See, you need, you need people on the outside like me to come up with the crazy ideas. There you and go. Then somebody's going to take my idea, make it a, a billion dollar thing, and then I'm not going to get a penny of it. So. Where are we going with this? I I don't know. Where should we open up the Zoom room? <laughs> all right, let's go. Well, I think it's, it is time to go to Q and A. And if all the questions are about Lindsay's billion dollar ideas, then if I anybody think... would like to, what, what is it like, sponsor or sponsor like you? buy my idea or something? What's that called? Sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, they'll have to Let's sponsor hope you. Let's have you. an idea then. Okay. We can get a you a you fund me. I okay. think that covers it for us, actually. I, you know what? That's great because it was a fun show, and there was a technical difficulty that actually got a little like laugh out of it, and um, we're feeling good about it. I think I disabled this one camera over here <laughs> mistakenly. <laughs> oh um, man! But that's what happens when you're doing live demos. That's right. You know, That's no one with this joystick is going to go in there in the middle of a live stream and change the communication settings. I, I just did that as a demonstration and didn't think of the For science. For science. You, For science. You disabled it. That's what we do. We discover over here. Yeah. And we, we do tinker. Things. And that's what you get. But. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's content so we can continue bringing you more content like this. And if you want more information about the HC Joy G4, it is going to be shipping within days. So you're going to want to get your orders in soon before we are sold out. So you can visit PTZ Optic or huddlecamhd.com slash hc-joy-g4 or Mm, email us. That's the wrong... uh website sorry to, to, to jump what in. is it oh you're scaring me it's huddlecamhd.com slash ptz dash joystick i Let apologize for yeah let's double check that because i apologize see look there it is see the doc see the doctor <gasps> it's ptz. i specifically asked for it to be ptz dash joystick that's why i know uh, uh i and it says to lean more so if you'd like to lean in some more to this, <laughs> ah, they got rid of it. He took it away. Real it's quick. fine. It's fine. I do like this diagram. Oh, okay, this is well. a good picture, though. It's very nice. It's I a great product. It, look at how cool that is. So you know, Lindsay said, Lindsay asked a question about how <laughs> somebody is saying something funny in the chat. Uh oh. Oh. We need to rebrand to make this the Huddle Cam Orange. I know. This is a good orange. Um, but okay, so reach out to us at partners at huddlecamhd.com to order this joystick or visit huddlecamhd.com slash PTZ dash joystick. You got it. You got it right that time. <laughs> got it right that are we time. doing a Zoom call or are we not doing it? No, we're not doing it. Okay, great. So it, that's it. That's it. We're done and we will see you next. <sighs> we'll see you Wednesday, May 31st for a very special show with Odd and Eight talking about our new Dante camera. Yes. Okay. If you're Ooh. interested in Dante, reach out to us, please. We're still getting a lot of requests for Dante stuff and uh, get the new Dante camera. So very excited about that. That's all, folks. Bye. I think my new favorite thing is.